one. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but let's face it, I'm a baby boomer, okay? And we'll just blame it on that. But anyway, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to share this screen. Wait a minute. No, this is gonna be a challenge. Hold on. Stop share. Let me go to my other screen. There it is. And now, can you see the um, vibrato? Am I sharing? Hold on, let me see. Okay, now everyone should see the vibrato page, correct? Somebody just answer me in the chat. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Again, my name is Teresa Webb, and I want to thank everybody for hopping on the call tonight. Um, you know, the market starts moving, really moves, does its push at 930. So I'll tell you more about myself a little bit later. But let's see um, what we can get into real quick. What uh, what trades we can get into real quick. Um, I do want you to know that, you know, I am um, with the CEO movement under Dwayne Lodge, as well as I Build Legacies. And um, Dwayne Lodge always says, you know, there's three different types of traders. There's a trader that wants to know everything. There's a trader that just wants to know enough to reach a level of excellence. And then there's a trader that doesn't have a lot of time and just wants to copy and paste. Well, I fall somewhere in the middle. So hopefully this will be a session where as, you know, if you see something that I don't see, because let's face it, we all see something different. If you see something that I don't see, you know, just let me know through the chat. Um, Aaliyah's on the call and I know she'll let me know when I need to look at the chat. Uh, but um, we're going to do this together, okay? So um, just look at it like it's a trading work group where we all participate. So um, when I look at the Vibrata, um, the last trade that caught, was called was AUDUSD, and it was a sale, and that was about 12 minutes ago. And I don't know who we had, who all we have on the call, but just as an idea, let me know how many people have actually been trading with the web analyzer. If you could just put a 111 in the chat, I'd say just put a 111 in the chat if you have not traded with the web analyzer. So most have, and a few of you have not. Um, what we'll do is the next time, what we'll do eventually is go over the settings. Um, as I'm looking at right, mine right now, the settings have changed on me. So if you want to just pull up your web analyzer, what I'll do, you can walk through changing the settings with me. Um, first of all, you want to make sure that you take a look at your strategy and make sure that um, it's Dr. Kathy's ECC 11. And just for your knowledge, um, I just want you to know that I started trading with Dr. Kathy around, it'll be two years in May of 2020. But she's the first person that introduced me to the trading, the educational portion of the trading. And I've been following her all this time. I didn't deviate from it because she was easy to follow. And I found that in my first month trading with her, even though she was calling the trade ideas, I actually profited $500. So with that being said, um, I've learned, I've taken most of all of her online training. I've participated in maybe one of her boot camps. 
Um, and um, I find that if it's working, why switch it? Um, so therefore, I've been following her. I think she has a heart of gold. I love her to death. Um, and, you know, um, I just don't see any reason to switch over to any other educators because of the fact it is working for me. So just so that you know, I have been following her for the entire time that I have been trading. Um, I actually learned the ECC 11 before it actually became a part of the web analyzer. And what I found through participating in this strategy is that it will allow you the ability to become financially free. Because I can literally know that even though, yes, I still have bills to pay, but I know that every day I wake up I can go to a computer, look at the market, and make money. And to me, that's financial freedom. To me, that is liberating. And if I can help others feel the same, if I can be a catalyst to help others have that same feeling, well, then I want to thank Dr. Kathy for giving me the opportunity to be able to do that. So uh, with that being said, um, if you go to strategy, if you don't have Dr. Kathy's strategy already pulled up, you just, at the bottom, of, you can see where my cursor is, where it says strategy, you can just click on that and it'll take you to the web analyzer settings. Just pick a strategy, just click on pick a strategy. And you'll see Dr. Kathy's ECC 11 is the first strategy. Just click on that and then save it for mobile Safari desktop. Save settings and reload. Just go where the curse, my cursor is. Save settings and reload. and you will have her strategy. Now, what I typically do is close these other settings because I don't use them. And then you wanna make sure that you have the correct cloud setting. The 9265226 is a scalping, um, strat is a scalping strategy for the Ikamoku cloud. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that setting to six. Thirteen. I guess I could do it this way, be easier. 13. Set it as, a de as your default, save as default, and then click OK. And one of the other things you may want to do under style is make sure that your style is accurate. Your conversion line should really be red. So you can just change that to red here. And what I do is try to make my line a little bit thicker so that I can see it. And you can do that under thickness. Make that a little bit thicker. And I really like the darker red. I'm a color person, so I like the darker red. So I'll change that to a darker red. There you go. Then the baseline should be blue. Oops, make sure that check is there. Change it to blue. And the thickness should be blue. And then the lagging line, it is green, but I do like to change the thickness on it so that I can see it. And then I'm going to save it as a default. Hit okay. And you've got the 
settings for the 10 pips and dips, which is really a scalping setting strategy. Um, typically what I do when um, a trade idea pops up and it should change, typically I look for it to be within the first three minutes or so. But this one is like, it's, it's been around for 20 minutes. So just as an example, right now, I'll just show you how I typically go in and trade. With AUD USD, I would click on this little blue circle and that changes it to the AUD USD market. And then at the next point, what I do is look at the call at price and I go to my horizontal line and I click on my horizontal line, go to settings, and I would actually enter in the called at price. And for AUD USD, the called at price is 68918. And then I click OK. Where'd my line go? Let's try this again. We're going to try this again. I don't know where my line went, but we're going to try it again. Horizontal line. There's my line. Click on my settings. We're going to put in the number 68918. Hit OK. And as you can see, this is where price was called. So then I'll go and set my vertical line. A vertical line will tell me what time and basically what candle um, price was called at. The time was 9.30 on the 13th. And 9.30 would be 21.30. So my vertical line is set there. I'm gonna close my RSI right here. So then I'm going to go ahead, since this is a sale and we're looking at 10 pips, um, this is the M15 time frame. So I'm just gonna subtract 10 pips from the call to add price. So I'm gonna to go to my horizontal line Go to settings, 10 pips from 6, 8. Well, that would be 6, 7, Let's see, nine, six, seven, six eight, eight, one. Click OK. Six, eight, eight, one, eight. And what I will be doing is looking for price to come to this area. It looks like here, when price was initially called, it actually came into, it actually um, sold for a little while, but then it pulled back. So now it's pulling back and we're just waiting for it to price to come down. So this will, at this point, this will be, not be a good trade to get into. If someone sees something else different, of course, feel free to type into the chat and let me know. But right now, this is not the trade that we want to get in. Um, so let's look around to see, what I like to do is just look to see if there's any other trades available to hop in right now while that particular we're waiting for that um particular trade to get in a price range so uh -huh. right now i'm just looking at i'm scanning the market right now to see if there's anything moving. Feel free to do the same.
And typically during the Asian session, I'm I'm looking at GBP, J, I mean, um, JPY pairs to see if they're moving during this time frame. Miss Teresa. Uh huh. Uh, somebody was asking in the chat if you can do it as a pending order. You could do it as a pending order. Yes, you could do it as a sale stop. I don't do a lot of pending orders. I do more market executions, but you can. Um, so you would you know, set your sale, your entrance price would be at the call at price. And your sale take profit would be um, the 10 pips, which would be at 68818. I'm looking at EUR JPY right now. I'm trying to see if you could possibly get 10 pips out of that particular trade. Um, let me pull it up right quick. When I look at EUR JP1, actually there's one minute left, one minute left on this candle. So I like to wait and see what the next candle's going to um, do. But if in fact the next candle is um, a blue candle, I think you may be able to get probably 10 pips out of this if you choose the red line is above the blue line the cloud is going up when i go to the one minute and check the one minute in actuality price is going down on the one well no it's going up now on the one minute Checking the five minute here. It looks like that candle is a sell candle on the five minute. And I always like to wait to make sure that the one minute candle, the five minute candle and the 15 minute candle is going in the same direction before I actually enter into a trade. And then, of course, for the 15 minute, we use that as our time frame for entering a trade. And we want to make sure that the 
candle is fully formed once we get a new candle and that and it's fully fully formed at about 12 minutes so now we have a new candle and we're going to wait until it's fully formed and we have about 14 minutes left on this candle and there you have it the um Vibrata has called EURJPY for the uh, one hour time frame. So if somebody could just watch EURJPY JPY for just a couple of minutes while I look to see if there's anything else that we could get into. I'm looking, scanning the market. Let's see what was that that went off. Okay, it looks like we can, there's a buy on GBPAUD. So let's go back to EURJPY to see. The candle is at 12.32. I'm just gonna wait till it gets to 12 minutes. Okay, we're at 12 minutes. So um, if you choose to, you can actually hop in um, EURJPY as a buy for 10 pips. If we all can agree that the red line is above the blue line, that the, the cloud is trending up, and you're all, you've got a blue candle there, so. It looks like EURJPY. You can get 10 pips out of that. So we're going to look at GBP AUD, which is one of my favorite pairs. I'm going to go to my horizontal line. And all you do is click on the screen once you click on the horizontal line. You click on the screen, the line pops up. Then you go to your settings. You put in the call at price, which is 88459. Click OK. Go to your vertical line. Just click on the screen, the vertical line will pop up. And it was called at 2107, is that 2107? 1007, so that would be 22. So,
All right, so that's around the candle that it was called at right there. So then what I'm going to do is go back to my horizontal line. And I'm going to add 10 pips to the call price, which is 88559. Let's zoom this right quick. It looks like this moved relatively fast. The red line's above the blue line. The, count, the cloud is pointed up. Price is right in between. Let me see if you can get more than 10, if you can go up a little bit further. I guess I would wait until price got beyond this point here. You can see where my cursor is. I will wait until price got above here. Right here. To see if I could take it up to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another horizontal line. Probably right here. And then we could take it up to here. I'll draw another line here if you could do it. Nope. Let's see how many pips that is. Let me get rid of these. Let me see my price. Where's my price at? There it is. So it's 69, 79, 69, 79, 89. That's over 20 pips right here. I would probably take it 10 pips at a time, but definitely wait until it gets to that point for GBP AUD. That's what I would do. Now, somebody else may have um, some other thoughts, but that's how I would handle it. Um, but this is one of my favorite pairs to trade, actually all of the GBP prayers. The confirmations that I use are the red line, of course, being above the blue line, and I always looked for the cloud in the direction of which is pointed. As you can see, the cloud is pointed really upward on this particular um, pair and oftentimes I will go to and check the one minute um, to see what price is doing. And clearly um, when I look at the one minute, I can see that 
it's still going to, it is above the cloud. Price will continue to go up. As you can see, this cloud is pointed in an upward direction. I really like to, to, I really do, my preference is that when I see the cloud pointed up like that to a point, that's when I really like to, um, to trade because I'm more confident in the trade when I see the cloud pointing up in that direction. Um, because sometimes you can look at the cloud and it kind of has a roundness to it. My preference is when it's pointed up to, to take the trade. So um, that's just kind of the way I trade. Those are the confirmations that I use. I also use the money line. Uh, the money line really is my number one indicator. And that's this green line here that you see. You know, it's the Chiku Span. But in fact, um, before it was before ECC eleven was even a part of the web analyzer, the money line was the first indicator um, that I learned, and it was a it, and it is my number one dominant indicator that I use for a confirmation. So um, to me, it's everything. Um, I always look to see to the candles because. You know, with the candles, you know, sometimes you can get 10 pips just out of one candle. So I'm always looking to see what the candles are actually doing. I think the question was, I lost the question. The money line tells me where price is. It's actually price action. It tells me exactly where price is. Because if you notice, when you look at the screen, when you look at price action, the money line moves first. The green line moves first. And then the candle follows the green line. And the red line kind of follows the candle when you look at this. And that's why the money line is my number one indicator uh, to tell where price is going. Then of course, I look at the candle because of the fact the candles, you know, just like I said, sometimes you can get 10 pips or more out of one candle. It just depends on price and the market at that time. But I definitely, I think the money line is everything. It tells me whether price is going up or down. And what I look for is the sharp points of the candle. You know, to me, when I look at the cloud and I look at the money line, you know, for people who like market structure, I'm not a market structure person because I think I'm too old to, to draw lines and I really don't have time to do that. But I think that the money line is like drawing the lines for me when I look at price action. So it tells me which way price is going. So price is either going, price is either going to go up for a buy, it's either going to go down for a sale, and it's either, and it's all, it also can go sideways. And when price is going sideways, all that means is that price is consolidating it's balancing out, it's resting, okay? And you don't wanna put in a trade when price is going sideways, when it's consolidating or resting. Um, you wanna you want get in a trade when it's going to be imbalanced, actually, when the market is at an imbalanced point. So I look for straight, when the, I look for straight lines, I look for points in which price is going up. Um, if you can follow this um, cursor, you know, I look for it to be priced. I look for the green line to be at a point and moving straight up if I'm going to decide to take a trade or not. Uh, when price is rounded like this, it's kind of viewed as a fake out. Um, it kind of, you know, sometimes the market does try to, the money makers try to fake you out. Well, when it's not at a point, it's somewhat of a fake out because as you can see, it comes right back down into a point and it moves up again. So that's what I look for. Like I look for points like this straight up. That's what I look for when I'm um, 
putting in trades, if that makes sense. And I'm always looking to the immediate left. So it's just like price right now is, is going uh, down. So I'm going to look to my immediate left to see how far price is going to go down. Well, it appears that it could very well go down to here. But I wouldn't get in the trade because there's like 26 seconds left on this red candle. So I would want to wait until the next candle um, appears and forms to determine which way I'm going to to go um, because the, it's just which way to decide whether or not I'm going to get into the trade because I know because the red line is above the blue line because the cloud is pointed in the upward direction. I know that this really is buying right now. I mean, even though we're on the 15 minute time frame and what we're doing is um, um, all we're doing is trading pullbacks right now still it's above the cloud which tells me that price action is going to continue to go up now if in fact price continues to come down and it goes through the cloud and comes below the cloud well then you know you're looking at a trend maybe changing you know so right now it's above the cloud so that tells me that I'm looking for, this is just pulling back a little bit. And it tells me I'm going to, that price is going to go back up. I can look further. I can go to the 30 minute, take a look at price and see which way it's going. It is above the cloud. The red line is a little bit above the blue line. Not that much. But um, it appears that it's going to continue to move uh, in an upward trend. I can go any. I can go further and look at the one hour, which tells you what is happening right now in the one hour. Prop prices in the cloud. So, you know, if I did anything, again. GBP, AUD, I'm only going to do about 10 pips if I can in the buy. So let's go back to the 15 minute, you know, because let's face it, you have to have patience with trading. Um, you have to pay attention to where the candle is going, where price action is. Um, as you can see, it's moving sideways, it's consolidating. So it may take it a while to get back up here to our range, but it's not a trade that we would get into right now because it's consolidating, it's, it's resting. Uh, so we move on to the next trade. I am? No, I'm not on the one minute. I'm on the 15 minute time frame. Okay, so let's take a look at GBP CAD. That's GBP AUD. I want to go back to EUR JPY. I'm looking at EURJPY to see if, in fact, we can get in. 
this trait and it's not ready. Let's look at GCAT. See if we can get in GCAT. And the one minute is moving up. On the five minute, it's moving up. On the 15 minute, it's not quite, there's nine minutes left on this candle, so we're gonna have to wait on the next candle. Let's see what it's doing on the 30. I do have a tendency to look at all time frames. On the 30, it will possibly go up. On the one hour, looks like it's going up. And on the four hour, It is below the cloud. The red line is below the cloud. I mean, the red line is below the blue line. So at least, and on that candle, it's two hours left on that candle for the four hours. So if in fact I got in GCAT, of course I would only do 10 pips. So let's go back to the 15 minute. And we're gonna wait on this candle to end. And we're gonna wait on the next candle to see if in fact it is a blue candle. And in the meantime, I'm going to check to see. Yeah, if in fact the next candle is a blue candle, I believe that we can get in GCAT. If in fact the next candle is a blue candle. And we have six minutes left on the candle. I have to zoom this out some more. I'm going to go ahead and draw the horizontal lines on this. Let's see if it's going to do what I like for it to do. It's one thing about the Asian session. It is a slower session. You don't have as much volatility um, in the Asian session as you have in the, um, the London session and the New York session. Um, that's why this session is not one of my favorite sessions, but it's a session in which it does give you an opportunity 
to look at the market and and, and even you know you may want to look at some trade setups but i think it's a chance for when you know people work different people's schedules are different you know, even though I like to get up at two o'clock in the morning um, and trade because of the volatility associated and the liquidity associated with the market, you know, not everybody can do that because of their lifestyles. You know, people have to go to work and things of that nature. And this is the only session that I'm aware of in which people who actually have jobs nine times out of 10 because most people, you know, the majority of the people do work, you know, first shift. I mean, you know, work from eight to four, eight to five or something like that. But anyway, this is a session where as at least it gives them an opportunity just to get a little bit more information about the market, um, about the ECC 11, you know, how it looks so that you can learn more about you know, putting your chain, the trades in, your trades in independently, especially with the ECC 11, because of the fact, basically, this is just like Dr. Kathy calling a trade idea. You know, it is her strategy. It is a strategy that she has created and the algorithms are based on that strategy. So it's just like her calling the signal. The rest of it is just knowing when to get in. And when to get in is when the red line crosses the blue line. Um, and that's how the algorithms were set up for this particular strategy. You know, I don't, I don't look at the RSI at all. Um, and that's why I typically just delete it because I, I don't use it. I haven't studied it. You know, as I said, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm the person, I'm the trader that doesn't know, have to know everything. I just need to know enough to make money. Um, and the things that I focus on is not necessarily the RSI. What I focus on is the money line. I focus on the candles and I focus on the red line crossing the blue line and whether or not it's up above or below the cloud. Those are my, that is my primary focus. I try to keep things as simple as possible. And when I'm trading, I try to look for clear shots. As an example, with GBPCAD, this, when once price gets here, this is a clear shot. As long as the cloud is continuing to go in an upward trend, once price gets here, this is a clear shot up to, this is a resistance area here. This is a resistance area here, but it's a clear shot up. And those are the types of things that I look for when I'm trading because the probabilities are if the cloud is pointing up, if the red line is above the blue line, if the green line is, if the money line is pointed up, it's more probable than not that price is going to continue to rise. And that is what I look for. I, look, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I, and, you know, I'm sorry, but I just don't use the RSI. And if there's anyone on here on this call that uses the RSI and can answer the question, please, you know, answer it in the chat if you can. Price is going down on the one minute. And it looks like it's trying to move up. Oh, it's 1030, man, and we really haven't gotten in a trade. Um, yeah, the Asian market is a slow market. But I'm going to see it, what price is going to do before we get off of here. Let me see.
I'm going to wait until this gets to 12 minutes. Someone asked in the chat, I'm just going through the chat while I'm waiting for this two minutes to, uh, while I'm waiting on this candle to form. But someone asked me, do I ever look for confirmation on the lower time frames before taking the trade or simply just use 15 minute chart? I use the 15 minute chart to enter, but I do look at the one minute chart and the five minute chart to make sure the candles are going in the same direction as the 15 minute. So if in fact I'm looking to buy for 10 pips, I want my one minute candle and my five minute candle to also be forming in a buy before I take it on the 15 minute. And I also um, am looking for the cloud to be pointing in an upward direction before I take the trade. And again, it's all based on probabilities. And I do that because it's more probable than not that the trade will continue to move up. Uh, And someone asked when the candles, I don't know if anybody answered a question or not, but when the candles are below the cloud, when the, when the candles are below the cloud, but the red line is above the blue, would that still constitute a buy or vice versa? Um, If price is below the cloud, typically you're looking at a sale. Now, if price is below the cloud, the red line is above the blue line, I'm not really doing anything. I'm waiting to see what price is going to do. Again, patience is a big factor here. Um, and if in fact, you want to get in GBP CAD. Let me look at the one minute right quick. Price is going up on the 15. Price is going down on the one minute now. going up on the one minute. Let's look at the five minute. The candle is going up on the five minute and the candle is going up on the 15 minute. So if you like, you can get in GBP, CAD for 10 pips. It's a buy. GBP CAD, I'm getting in it for 10 pips.
So guys, that concludes my time for today. Um, again, I am going to be on every Monday through Thursday um, to give everyone an opportunity to, you know, ask questions, to give them opportunity to be more familiar with the ECC, become more familiar with the ECC 11, because I do know that this strategy will provide you with the financial freedom that you, you're looking for, because if it can do it for me, it can do it for anyone. So with that being said, um, everybody have a good evening, and I hope you got some value out of it, and I will see you tomorrow night. Uh, it is a recording. It is recorded. I don't know um, if it'll be available. You'll have to talk to ask the question to Shante. So that concludes my time. Have a good evening, everyone. So how do I stop sharing?